Okay, so here we are starting day two of Polar. And let's see if you, do you speak Polar? We'll find out. I heard that Colorado yeah. Could you start by just graphing two comma pi? If you understand Polar, you should be able to say, oh, that's easy. I know where pi is and I know how long two is and so... All right, well, here's pi, and you just needed to go two along pi, and you put a dot there. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, awesome. Now, that one would be ridiculously easy to get four <coughs> answers for, so let's do that. It'd be two comma, what's a negative angle you could say? Just say it if you know it. Negative, negative pi. Negative pi. Okay, and then... Could you write that as negative two comma something? Yes, but you'd need to make the shadow point. The <laughs> doppelganger. And it's over here. And that point is actually what comma what? You really got to go with a positive here and then reflect it over. It's two comma what? Zero. zero. So then this becomes negative two comma zero. Okay, so if you bop it over here, it will become negative 2 comma 0. And last but not least, negative 2 comma, well, what's at least another way to write it, even if I can't write it with a negative? I guess I could write it with a negative angle if I made it negative 360, for example. Do you see what I'm saying? The 0 is the same as negative 360, You're right back to there. So that would be negative 2 pi. Okay, so there's a polar point that's a little unusual. Let's do more of a normal polar point. I'd like you to take this point right there, and let's assume for a moment that its polar coordinates were 7, comma, uh, negative pi over 6. Would you please give me three other ways to write that that are polar? Pause for a second while you give that a try. Okay, so here we go. I'd like to get some volunteers to take a few. Nate, can you tell me a couple? Like seven comma? Seven, 11 pi over six. Agreed. And then how about the doppelganger point over here? Give me one of those. Negative seven and five pi over six. To start with, this point itself isn't negative. That point itself is just seven comma what? Five pi over six. So then, if it's the shadow of that, we bounce it over, and this becomes negative when it goes over here. Negative seven, five pi over six. And then one more for that, Michael. Um, negative seven, negative seven pi over six. All right, so this would be negative seven pi over six, so I can't argue. Negative seven, negative seven pi over six. There we go. Now... I'd like you to take a moment and figure out the rectangular for that point. Rectangular is an x comma a y. That point right there. Now, if I were you, I'd draw a classic 30, 60, 90 triangle in the same orientation where it goes like that. And that's a one and a two and a square and a three and that'll help you. Considering this side is seven I'd say this is y, and I'd say this side is x. And then hopefully, you came up with the ratio that 7 is to 2, like y is to 1, which means y is 7 over 2. And x, you'd say, I'll, I'll do it this way, x is to root three, like seven is to two. X is to root three, like seven is to two. Double checking myself there. Yep, and then I multiply both sides by root three. Seven root three over two.
Raise your hand if you had. A seven, root three over two. And a seven over two. Okay, any questions about that? Oh, wait, is there a negative supposed to be somewhere? Ooh, I bet a lot of people got smoked by that. It's going down right here. So that Y should be negative. That should be negative seven over two. Okay, that's what you're supposed to know so far. So what am I teaching you today? Well, it's called rectangular conversion. Well, first of all, you gotta understand the difference between a rectangular equation and a polar equation. That's a polar equation. It just has R in it. You know how easy it is to graph that? You make a circle with a radius of three. See how simple that is? Boom. Now, if we wanted to have that in our regular rectangular system, we'd have to say that x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared, which would be like three squared. But I'm just gonna write it in its purest form. And I bet you never thought about that r as being like the same r that's in polar. So if I wanted that equation, I'd say x squared plus y squared is equal to, well, I know r is three, so then it'd be three squared, so it'd be nine. That's the rectangular equation for that. This can be converted into that, or vice versa. All right, here's a much simpler equation. Y equals 2X. Would you please just sketch what that looks like? You know what that looks like, don't you? It creates a line that goes through zero and has a slope of two. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Then, not many of you would have known that that would be R sine theta is equal to two times R cosine theta. Because that's the, no, this is the rectangular way. This is the polar way to write that same exact thing. And that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do today. It's really not that bad. You just have to memorize a few things. Like, do you guys remember the first time I taught you cosecant? I was like, just think of it as sine except flipped. You know, you could, whatever you had cosecant, it was just sine except it's flipped over, okay? Another one, I gave you this factoid, I understand, about sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And that meant whenever you had a sine squared plus cosine squared, you could pull it out and put in a one. Well, there's certain things you have to memorize for this unit. Whenever you have a Y, you could put in R sine theta right there. That's what Y is. And take a wild guess what X is. R cosine theta. So to convert a rectangular to a polar, you just have to know a few things. Now, I find it annoying if somebody just tells me, it, it's just a fact, just, you know, like, Trees are reptiles. It's just a fact. Okay. Well, let's change your mind. So, uh, science is fickle sometimes. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, if I'm going to explain to you why why is R sine theta, I'd like to get to. We're going to go through Battleship because we've already practiced how to do polar, and this is kind of fun, but we have a lot to do today. So we'll maybe do that tomorrow. All right. So, this little equation tells me so many facts. And I didn't see them even at first today when I pulled it up. I'm like, why is, what, what is this going to help with? And now I realize it's everything. So, if you're going to convert between rectangular and polar, you need things that are in X and Y to be converted into R's and thetas. And so, here's a fact for you. Deal with it. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Isn't that true? Yes. Cool. That means wherever you see x squared plus y squared, you can replace it with an r squared. So if you had x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, do you get if you needed to convert that to polar, it would be as simple as r squared equals 16. See what's happening there? And this squared here, you get rid of that by square rooting both sides and you get r equals four. r equals four will give you the same circle that that will. So you gotta have this as one of your four things that you need to memorize. And you don't have to memorize them. 
You could memorize this drawing and then recreate all of them. Here's the next one. Would you please figure out what sine of theta is? And don't say just why, because it's close, but it's not right. Look at the drawing. Sine is y, what? Over r. Over r. So what happens when I multiply both sides by r? r sine theta. So what do you think is going to happen when I say cosine of theta is equal to x over r? Then I'm gonna multiply both sides by r and I'm gonna get r cosine theta. Look at that. So there's three facts. There's one more big one that we use a lot. So when you can probably count on every one of these coming up on your next test. And there's one more that doesn't always come up, but when it does, it's super powerful. Would you please just tell me what tangent of theta is? What's tangent of theta? Toby. Toby, you know this one? Tangent of theta is y over x. Yeah, it's y over x. And look at that. That's rectangular on the right side, polar on the left side. Kind of like a mullet. Business in front, party in the back. There's your four things. With these four things, you'll be able to do any conversion problem that we could give you on the test. Here, I'll give you an easy one. Use these four things to convert this. Y equals 7. Isn't that a rectangular graph? You could graph that, couldn't you? Yes. So how the heck would you do that in polar? Well, change it to polar. Do it. Compare with the kid next to you. What's the polar equation for that? You know, I think I'd say, I'm going to pause for a second. So, this wasn't supposed to be super hard. It was just supposed to be find it. Look it. Y is R sine theta. There it is. So you replace this with R sine theta. Now, if you were wondering if there's anything more you should do, there is. It's just that you should solve it for R. So would everybody please solve that for R if you haven't already? R equals 7 over sine theta. If you actually put this in a calculator, there, there, you have a calculator. You don't have to do this right now. But if you were to go to the polar mode of your calculator and then go to your graphing screen, it doesn't say y equals y equals y equals y equals. It says r equals r equals r equals r equals. And you type in the equations and it'll graph them. And guess what you get when you type that in? You get the same exact thing as y equals 7. You get a straight line across at 7. It's weird that a, uh, the sine equation would do that, but it does. So this gives you the same exact thing as you had in the first place, just written different. It's like learning how to speak of a different language. You can say the same exact thing in English, like it's right around the corner, or in German, gleich um die Ecke. And it means the same thing. Okay, so can you take those four things and like solve problems with it? Well, sometimes they just look weird y equals negative x, and they'll say, convert that to polar. There's two ways to do it, and I want to see which way you are. It'll be like a personality test. It's like if they show you two swans kissing, and like you, you see like a guy with an axe or something. So we'll, And some other people see the swans kissing. Maybe some people see the heart. Some people see the negative space. All right, so I'm trying to ask you to solve that by not really solve it, it's solved for y already, but change it to polar. And let's see if you do it this way or that way. I'm gonna pause for a second while you give it a try. I think okay, so what is the obvious way? R sine theta here equals negative of R cosine theta. And usually you have to solve it for R, but that'll be a little weird. But it's not impossible. 
Any thoughts? Yes, sir? Can you just divide by both sides and get rid of R? No, if you just make R disappear, you didn't solve for R. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for trying, but nope, that wouldn't work. Yes, Mr. Blue. No, you don't want to don't want to divide both sides by anything. No. Nope. <gasps> she said factor because a lot of smart people were stuck, and she thought maybe it's factoring, and she was right. R sine theta plus R cosine theta is equal to zero. Yeah, get it all to one side. Factor out the R. And look at that. It factors. All right, and it's not, yeah, it is zero. All right. And then it's R equals zero. All right, yes, it, it should give you identity vibes. It is similar to that. All right. Now, well, the problem is we've done this in such a bizarre way that uh, we're kind of losing our way. So I don't want to continue with this further. We need to get back to where we were because there's a so much easier way to do this. So much easier. What if you had divided by x right off the bat? You'd have had y over x is equal to negative 1. Any thoughts? Tangent is y over x, isn't it? Now, how do you know if you're done? Like, whether you have accomplished the task? Well, it had y's and x's in it. That made it rectangular. Now, it's got only r's or thetas, or both. So then this is in polar. That's polar language. Now, what do you have to st solve for? Well, it depends on the problem. They could ask you to solve for theta, or they could ask you to solve for r, and sometimes we don't ask you to solve for anything. We just say... Change it, convert it, done. You don't have to. Yep, just just get it to be polar. You don't have to always solve for something. All right, so change. Try this one. This one is back to simpler again. Read the directions. That's a novel idea. Okay, so let's see if you knew how to do this. First of all, two. Negative pi over 6. I hope that went quick. Raise your hand if you knew it was there. Okay, awesome. But then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to change them into rectangular. Okay, well, then this is 2, and then I can draw this, and this is a 30. Oh, I know this one. 1, 2, root 3. Do you get how fast that was to be able to find the rectangular for it? Do you get if this had not been a 2? It wouldn't have been so fast. Okay. All right, yes, that's true. But it is the final answer here is, Mr. Lou, what do you say? Uh, yep, that's the rectangular coordinates for that point. Okay, I think you get that. Let's move to this page. X squared, Y squared, and a number that happens to be squared. Coincidence? I think not. Do you feel like that's a circle? Do you feel like it's a circle that has no, been it's moved? A Wait, no, it's a circle. It's a circle. And do you feel like it's been moved a little bit because of that minus 3 in there with the x? Which way has it been moved? Inside. Yes. Left, right. Right, right. 3. And the radius of said circle? 3. three. All right. Could you make that in polar, do you think? Why not? Well, of course you could. So your job on this problem, and it says do a last because it's the hardest one. Well, I already did this one with you. How about if we, we delay A and we go over here? Let's do this one. That'll be easier. Y equals X squared. Ooh, I know what Y is. Do you? Uh, R sine theta. sine theta. Correct. Do you know what X squared is? R cosine squared theta. You could do that, but there's something better. So there's two options. You remember the, 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 as you were saying before, it was giving you identity vibes. So yeah, there's two ways to do a lot of the identity problems. Well, there's two ways to do this too. You can just make X as R cosine theta and then say it's squared. I could do that. That's legal. Or did you remember an X squared in one of those? 
x squared plus y squared was equal to r squared, wasn't it? So could I have said that x squared could be replaced with r squared minus y squared? I could. Now, would that be any better? Maybe. Maybe. I could say r squared minus y squared. And then, am I done? No. I'm still going to just have to replace the y with something else. Because how do I know I'm not done? Because it doesn't have only r's and thetas, so I'd have to replace the y with r sine theta, and that's dumb. Oh, wait, or is it? Isn't it better to have only one function? Yes. Yeah. If it was all sines, that'd be smart. So then r sine theta is equal to r squared. You're going to leave that alone because it's already in polar language. y is r sine theta squared. Why is all of it in and then I just put that in. Yes, that's an r, just to clarify. Because y is r sine theta, isn't it? And since there was a negative in front and it was getting squared, I just thought I'd make it more clear by putting parentheses there. You don't have to have them. Okay. And then, last but not least, you'd have to now look at the directions and pray that it doesn't say you have to solve for r. Does it say you have to solve for r? Because no. if you do, you probably have to get it all to one side and try to factor it. It does have a squared in it. It makes me think it might be a quadratic and it might factor out. But I'm glad I don't have to because it doesn't say you have to solve for r. Okay. Now, uh, if you're going to do this one, there's the easy way and the hard way. Uh, and I think the easy way is just simply swapping out x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. And then you would have made it into polar. The only thing is that it isn't, it just doesn't look very nice and you got two different functions in it. Okay, so we could basically do the same thing we just did a second ago. And... Use this equation again and say, couldn't this kind of all be r squared? r squared is x squared plus y squared. It's close to r squared, but it's not quite r squared. All right, I'm going to be honest, we're never going to have one that hard. And I'm stuck, and it's okay because we're not going to have any of that art. So yay. Let's move on. I'll come back, sir. All right, so this one I'd like you to be able to do. That's a pretty simple one. It's just that we now have polar and we need to change to rectangular. So try to change that to rectangular. Question. Uh, about the last one, would you be able to distribute the squared and then the, and then subtract the nine from the other one? Because that's what we're doing. Let's see. This would be x minus 3 quantity squared would be uh, x squared minus 6x six. Six mi plus 9, and then plus y squared is equal to 9. It's a novel idea. It might work. And if I subtract 9 from both sides, now I have x squared minus 6x plus y squared. Um... It's not wrong. And you could replace x squared. Oh, wait, woo, wait a minute. I got an x squared plus y squared. Do you see the x squared plus y squared? Mm -hmm. What can you replace that with? R. Close. Squared. Yep. And then I'd have r squared minus 6x is equal to 0. You just really wanted me to solve this, didn't you? Yeah. And then the x is r cosine theta. As I said, we wouldn't have anything that hard, but hey, yay, we did it. Thank you. All right, so convert each equation in polar into an equation in rectangular. At least you should be able to do these two. Try A and B. Those are polars. Make them rectangular. I'll pause for a second and give that a shot. All right. There's usually kids that figure out this little trick, and there's kids that don't. 
You might figure out a smart thing to do on on number 2A there. You might catch it. Because you might be thinking like, R, I don't have anything to swap out for R. I mean, if I had X, I could put R cosine theta, but what do I put for R? You don't. But you do have something you could put for R squared. So, what do you think I should do? Yes. Multiply both sides by R. Okay, and what you said was square everything, and what you said was multiply both things by R, and they're different, but the same. What? Would you agree if I multiply both things by r, that's going to end up giving me an r squared? But r is equal to negative 3. This whole so it would work, though, wouldn't it? Like timesing by r on both sides is legal, right? So that would work. And this is important because these are like two of the things you're going to have to do on the test. Okay, so I multiply both sides by r. That works because then I got r squared, and I know what that is. It's right on the sheet. It's like the identity sheet, except you made it yourself. And what is r squared equal to? Well, yes, but I mean, off the sheet, r squared could be replaced with what? X squared plus y squared. And then this is negative 3 times an r. Oh, if I knew what an r was, I would have probably just done something different in the first place. So that didn't work super well. So say it again, Mr. Lou. So you square it. Because this way I tried it, and just like the identities unit... Sometimes try stuff and it's like, oh, that didn't work. I don't like this. I'm going to try again. And I'm going to square both sides. But I'm telling you, there's moments where you're going to want to multiply by r on both sides. But this time, you'd rather square both sides. Because r squared is just x squared plus y squared. And negative 3 squared is 9. Boom. I know what that even looks like now. That's a circle with a radius of 3. And you might have been like, well, the original was a circle with a radius of 3. It was just in polar language. Yes, it was. And negative 3 and 3 are the same. What? A circle with a radius of negative 3 is the same exact thing as a circle with a radius of 3 because when you reflect it across the circle to the other side of the circle, you just write on the circle again. Okay. How about this one? I'm going to need help on this one because this one's tricky. Theta is 4 pi over 3. Somebody's going to help me figure this out. Okay, and I kind of did one, two, skip a few, and I'm now on problem 58. Uh, and that one we just changed from rectangular to polar. All right, and that's all I've got for you for today.